This is the reading of Kwanzaa for Conrad, the A and the Survival Tangle. This book can be purchased on Amazon, Barnes or Noble, or Author House. You can check on Google with Odie Hawkins' name and the name of the book, or any of his books, to purchase a book by Odie Hawkins. Mr. Hawkins, would you begin the reading of Kwanzaa for Conrad? I'd like to start off by <clears throat> reading the dedication to all of us who are dealing with mental diseases, homelessness, hopelessness, and despair, and to the Los Angeles Mission, which exists to provide help, hope, and opportunity to the men, women, and children in need. The Los Angeles Mission strives to be a world leader among missions that provide for the poor, restore the addicted, and eliminate homelessness. And so we begin. Uh, a further dedication may be dedicated to all the comrades, male and female. Kwanzaa for Conrad and the Survival Tango. Right here, right here in the spot where the sidewalk is split. I lived for three long, crazy years. Or was it four? Sometimes it's hard to remember. A voice told me that I would die if I strayed too far from this spot. It wasn't easy to believe that Emmanuel Conrad, brilliant scholar at a prestigious university, ex-pro football player, quarterback, best-selling author, once lived on a crack in the sidewalk of Fourth Avenue downtown. I looked at I looked up at it. That wasn't hard to do. At 6'4, he towered over my 5'8. I want to know who you are again? After just a couple of days I was beginning to use the language of the people surrounding us. Hey Conrad! You ain't out here no more, huh? No, my brother. I ain't out here no more. I was out here for 25 years. You lived on the streets for 25 years? That's right. Up to two years ago when San Julian broke out. Summertime on Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles. I strolled alongside big, big Emmanuel Conrad, feeling less afraid than I had felt for the past three nights. Alone, I felt vulnerable, a pale-faced nerd making his way through the garbage, the makeshift cardboard shelters, the tents, the rats that littered the sidewalks. Excuse me, my name is Michael Bronstein. I work for CV Magazine, and I'm looking for Emmanuel Conrad. Get the fuck away from me, I don't know no Emmanuel Conrad. Emmanuel Conrad, he's a writer. They told me I might be able to find them down here. I just told you. I don't know no fucking Conrad. I get the fuck out of my face. Well, if you should happen to see him, here's my card. Ask him to give me a ring. We'd like to do a feature on him for City Beat Magazine. The guy gave the card to a grizzled relic from some dark horror movie, stared at it as though it were contaminated and then tucked it into one of the layers of his multi-layered rags. What was I supposed to tell my author? Uh, my editor. I was assigned to do an interview of a guy who had a bestseller on the LA Times list for the past six weeks and now was invisible. Look, this guy is down there on Sid Row somewhere. He can't be invisible. After all, he has a book on the bestseller list. Find him, Bronstein. Interview him. Earn your daily bagel. Okay? Shirley Brown, editor of City Beat Magazine, was not into being nice when she watered the story. Find him, Bronstein. Make your family proud of you. Give us the atmosphere, the stench, life on the street. You know what I'm asking for. We will make it a series for our December the January issue. Or maybe the Black History February issue. I haven't decided yet. Okay? 
on where it is. Where that is. I knew where he was to yesterday. I stared into the old, old face of what might have been a young African American woman. It was twilight and I was beginning once again to feel that I was an outsider. My emotional antenna was up. Was she trying to play me for something? I'd already passed out $200 of City Geek slush fund money to locate the mysterious Mr. Conrad. Okay, lady, where is he? Maybe I was becoming calloused hard. I slipped the $20 bill into a grimy paw and tacked my hard look on my face. Where, well, mister? Like I said, I knew where he was till yesterday. It sounded like a sly plea for more bribe money to me. I took casual note of the disgusted look on the dark horror movie face guy's face as I palmed another 20 into the ancient youth crone's crack cocaine wrinkle face. I've been on Skid Row long enough to recognize that look. So, where is he? She did a surprise, surreptitious study of the $20 bill. Damn it. I could have had it for 10 Well, like I said, I knew where he was up to yesterday. I palmed her another 10 spot. Anything to get to the heart of the darkness. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Brown, City Beat Magazine editor. I was going to do whatever was necessary to locate Emmanuel Conrad, best-selling African-American author currently living on Skid Row somewhere. So where is he? I probed deeply. He may be up in here. She pointed to the hotel behind her with a chin. Check to death. The hangdog expression certainly warranted more money. But courageously, I resisted. You say he's here? No. Like I say, he might have been here since yesterday. But he might be somewhere else now. Damn it. Foiled again. Now what? Nobody at the New Hampshire School of Journalism had ever taught us anything about finding interviewees on Skid Row. I strolled through the tired, funky tobacco-stained lobby of Mr. Emmanuel Conrad's assumed residence, the Ghetto Sketches Hotel. Ah, Mr. Conrad, Mr. Emmanuel Conrad, just a moment, sir. Would you kindly take a seat over there while we locate Mr. Conrad? The desk clerk turned back to fiddle with the remote. I'm thinking out loud, whoa, wait a sec. This has got to be the ultimate unreal bill. Here I am trying to locate a citizen of Skid Row, who has written a best-selling novel, and then put me on hold to deal with the immediate concerns of a jive-ass television show. How do I know it's a jive-ass television show? Well, uh, most of them. I sat in the lobby of the Hotel Ghetto Sketches for an hour before the woman I'd given the latest bride shuffled in. Come right outside, she whispered, and held her palm out for another ten spot. Damn! I meant to break the cycle of bribery and all that, but this just didn't seem to be the, be the right time. Well, where is he? I whispered back. Right here, she announced and scurried off. Emmanuel Conrad, brilliant scholar, ex-pro football quarterback. Skid Row Habitant, best-selling author, was blocking out the street in back of him. My name is Michael Brunstein. I know. I know. I got your card. So, well, I'm from, I'm from City B. I'm familiar with your fucked up pseudo liberal rag mag. What do you want from me? It took a couple of blinks to think it out. What did I want from him? City B, Shirley Brown, editor, that simply set me to locate a best-selling author that no one had ever interviewed. It was going to be a coup. The whole slant of the thing was resting on my journalistic shoulders. Well, now that you ask, I really can't say what I want from you. My editor said, go interview this guy. So you're here to interview me. Well, hopefully, it'll be about much more than an interview. I don't know what I said. I can't honestly say what triggered our bond. All I can say is that now I was strolling through the skid rows 
that comprised Skid Row in Greater Los Angeles with Emmanuel Conrad, the best-selling author of San Julian Street. Uh, Mr. Conrad, call me Brother Conrad. Uh, Brother Conrad, you ain't out here no more, huh? No, sister, I ain't out here no more. Uh, Conrad, Brother Conrad, how does it make you feel? What? What? What, somebody down here called out to you asking you about your current status. He didn't reply, he simply speared me into a restaurant that could have been the role model for a greasy spoon. Let's get something to eat. The fast food taco Chinese place knew him and piled more bad food on two trays than I'd ever been exposed to. You don't have to eat this if you don't want to. His suggestion sounded almost apologetic. I took him up on his offer and suffered through a greasy chicken taco. Summertime on Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles. Smells, unforgettable tableaus. I started thinking about a camera. The streets. After a hasty burrito and beans, his choice, and a chicken taco, I'm sh we're strolling the streets again. Suddenly he waves his right hand and a nebulous goodbye salutation and disappears up a dark alley. Should I follow? Two days later, I'm back on Spear Road on St. Julian Street, looking for Emmanuel Conrad, best-selling author. Uh, my name is Michael Bronstein from City Beat Magazine. Never been exposed to so many people who would nod in such a negative way. No one knew Conrad suddenly. Michael, we want to put the Emmanuel Conrad article in our latest issue. What's up with that? Surely, to be honest with you, I think I have a hook. The problem is hooking up with the subject. Well, that's a problem you're going to have to deal with, isn't it? Frank, what's happened with the pedophile thing? Suddenly, I was back down Skid Row, my job at stake. That's the way it was. Shirley Brown fired people who couldn't complete their assignments. Emmanuel Conrad? I don't know no Conrad. You want something to help me out? How could a few rat shit pellets of crack cocaine help me out? I found myself faced with an offer that I could easily refuse. He whispered over my shoulder into my right ear. They tell me you've been looking for me. I swallowed my last bite of greasy chicken taco and twisted around to face Emmanuel Conrad. I felt angry enough to want to say something very undiplomatic, but his charming smile canceled the bad vibe out. Yeah, remember the other day you were giving me an interview and suddenly you broke it off and went somewhere. Well, I'm back now, he announced, and signaled for a cup of coffee. Minutes later, we were strolling through Skid Row as though nothing had happened. So what do you want to interview me about? I want to interview you about San Junior Street, your book, about you, your life, all of this. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought I detected a slight smile. It was my turn. Before we get to you, let's go to San Junior Street. What made you do it? Good question, he said, and strolled beside me, not making any other comment. I felt intensely frustrated. It was time to become aggressive. Conrad, look, I have an attitude as a real bitch. You know what I'm saying? If I don't come back with a world-class dynamite interview of the best-selling author, I could lose a few brownie points. Why did you say that, Ronstein? I thought I conveyed that impression when we first met. No, you didn't. But ain't no real big thing. Let's walk on over here to the square. It's a good place to sit and write. Persian Square at high noon. Bold pigeons big for food from the noonday lunch crowd. A wide range of assortment of diverse human beings hangs out here. Some of them are completely sane. Emmanuel Conrad sprawled on one of the stone benches circling the south and western fringes of the square. All six foot four of him, covered by clothes that looked as though they had just been snatched out of the dryer at the local laundromat. How could a best-selling author run around in rough, dry clothes? Well, that's what his expression conveyed to me. 
It was time for me to dig into the core. Okay, Mr. Conrad, let's have it. Who were you? What are you? And what the hell are you planning to become? I'll never forget the out outrageous roar of his volcanic laughter. <laughs> To be completely honest, he scared the crap out of me. Hell, you want to know everything, huh? I nodded numbly. He ignored the first question I put to him, and the second one, and simply started talking. I thought it was schizoid stuff until I began to listen more closely. His voice was barely louder than the traffic around us. I knew I could work my way back through, <coughs> even though the obstacles seemed insurmountable. Being homeless and schizophrenic were not easy bumps to get over. There were a number of people who thought I couldn't make it, that I couldn't make it, or that I wouldn't make it. I followed his intense gaze at a man who had come to sit on the steps about 20 yards in front of us. He was brushing his hair, or rather he was brushing the bald spots on his head where his hair had been. He brushed with a heavy hand. Evidently, he had brushed himself into baldness. How long was I on the streets out here? Roughly a quarter of a century. Twenty-five years. Strange as it may seem, I can't recall any one of those years as well I can recall that three-year attachment to that section of the sidewalk I showed you. It would take weeks to run you through the horrors I experienced during my time out here. But nothing sticks in my mind like those three years. You say a voice told you that you would die if you left that spot? He turned to glare at me. Oh, the fuck told you that? You did, the other day. The glare became a charming smile. Yeah, well, it's true. That's the nature of schizophrenia. The voices, the forces that have control of your behavior, the demons, the madness. Both of us looked at, followed the shuffling, erratic walk of a man completely covered with grime and grease, pulling a supermarket cart through the square. He could have been an old man, a young man, and if he hadn't had a long, scraggly beard, he might have been a woman. He paused every now and then to carry on an animated conversation with an imaginary companion. Conrad nodded in the man's direction. I used to be like him. The person he's talking to now is just as real to him as you are to me. Why is he still there and you're here? Once again, he ignored my question and simply started talking. It was a little disconcerting to not have someone respond to a direct question, but I had to go with the flow. After all, he was given City Beat an interview. He was saving my job. Of course, I had people talk to me about my problems. Some of them were down and out, just like me. But for some reason, they seemed to feel that I had a chance to make it. Look, Conrad, they told me, you don't have to be down here. You got an education. You got brains. And then there were those lovely people who worked in the Ray Gun building, the Department of Just Us. Right over there on Spring Street, the legal secretaries, especially that wonderful little sister who wore the cowboy hats. Damn, what was her name? He paused and stared at the man brushing his bald spots. I felt tempted to pop in and say, well, okay, look, why are you trying to remember this person's name? Let me ask you this. But I didn't. Lord Selena, that was her name. Never will forget her. She gave me some money. Brought me food, gave me encouragement with her upbeat vibe. All of them did to some extent, but she was special. You know what I'm saying? 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 I'm going to leave it at this point. So that saves the continuation for part two. Yes. That. This concludes the first reading of Kwanzaa for Conrad and the Survival Tangle. Thank you, Odie Hawkins. This is an interesting beginning.
Thank you. See you next time. See you next time. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Ciao. Ciao.